Welcome participants to this particular week. In this week, we will be mostly focusing on all calculations related to knitting. In last weeks, uh, you have seen lot of technologies related to weft knitting, including single bed knitting, double bed knitting, circular knitting, flat knitting. You have also seen that fabric designing, you design a number of fabrics. You have seen jacquard knitting where you have the possibility of loop transfer, racking. So with the help of that, we can design enormous number of uh, fabric structures. Now let us focus here completely on some of the basic structure uh, for which uh, we can derive some useful relationships through which we can calculate or uh, determine yarn parameters which is required for knitting or we can determine the fabric analysis with the help of these uh, equations or we can determine the production of the machines. So in this entire week, we will be fo uh, mainly focusing on deriving some useful relationship from yarn or fabric parameters as well as machine parameters. So let us start calculation part. So in this particular um, category, I have divided the knitting calculation into five segments. Uh, so first, we will talk about the yarn selections. Yarn selections means uh, you have seen the machine gauge varies, machine technologies varies. So uh, we cannot run the same type of yarn in all the machine gauge or all the machine technology. So definitely we need to choose the right yarn or right yarn count for a particular machine technologies and gauge. So what are the relationships that exist uh, between the yarn count and the machine gauge uh, that we are going to look at uh, in this particular lecture. Uh, second thing we are going to also learn about the production because if you see from the company point of view they are more worried about how much you can produce, uh, how much length of the fabric can be produced in an hour or what are the weight of the fabric that can be produced in an hour. So the company are more focused on the production rate. So we will see how uh, we can use machine parameters and structural parameters to determine the fabric production both on flat as well as circular knitting. Now uh, we will also see some of the basic calculations related to uh, fabric like calculating GSM with fabric structural parameters like loop length, stitch density, yarn text. We will also see length and width of the fabric, how we can determine uh, with the help of shrinkage uh, parameters. So all related to calculations of the fabric structure, uh, we will derive some useful relationship. The fourth part is fabric spirality, uh, which is also very commonly observed in uh, single jersey fabric on circular knitting, especially multi-feeder circular knitting machines. We observe spirality. So uh, this is a new term to you. Uh, spirality is nothing but uh, you will observe the veil line uh, will not remain vertical um, and you will observe the, the structure of the fabric uh, in, a, in a relaxed state the course line or the veil line will not be perpendicular to each other. So in that case some de defects uh, may be observed in the fabric uh, appearance. So we will see how a useful relationship can be help you to removing this spirality defect from the fabric. So once we will move to that lecture. Uh, other also uh, some geometrical modeling like how you can derive uh, GSM cover factor, everything with by loop length. So these are the some uh, topics which we will be covering in this particular week. Let us start with the first topic which is selection of the yarn. So how do we select yarn for a particular machine or for a particular machine gauge? So since yarn is the key word here, so first we will learn some basics about yarn and then we will move. Uh, uh, what are the criteria and what are the relationship that, that exist uh, for yarn selection on a particular machine. So uh, first thing uh, we need to understand is yarn count. Uh, I know uh, many of you who have done courses related to textile, they might be knowing this word count. So uh, count is nothing but we determine the linear density of the yarn. So it's a, it's a way to represent the mass per unit length of the yarn. In terms of standards, 
if you see yarn counts, there are a number of yarns you can find in textile industry, um, or either cotton yarn, polyester yarn, and all of these can vary in terms of yarn count. So, yarn count is nothing but a kind of linear density which is expressed as either mass per unit length or length per unit mass depending on what are the yarn numbering system we used. So, uh, some of the common terms in which you might have heard in yarn count is tex, denier, English count, metric count, worsted count. So, it is better to clarify these terms uh, because we I will be also using some of these terms frequently. So, uh, let us uh, clarify these few uh, common terms which is used in representing the yarn count. So, in yarn count we basically follow two methods, first is indirect method where we express the length of yarn per unit mass of the system. So, here uh, there are three commonly used yarn count system, English count, metric count and worsted count. And here if you are expressing the yarn in terms of indirect system, it means when you have higher yarn count, it means you are dealing with lower thickness yarn or finer yarn. So, higher yarn count means finer yarn in case of indirect system. In direct system, uh, it is the reverse. So, here we expressed uh, the yarn mass per unit length of the yarn. So, here mass of yarn per unit length of the yarn and here two popular terms that we used is tex and denier. Uh, in if we are talking or expressing yarn in direct system, it means higher yarn count means coarser yarn. So, this is the common difference and uh, uh, where if you see indirect system, higher yarn count means finer yarn, but if you see direct system, higher yarn count means coarser yarn, higher thickness. So, uh, it is better we should clarify this because uh, so that you should be clear about whether um, you are following direct system or indirect system for representing yarn count. So, uh, in the indirect system, the formula for finding the English count, uh, which is the commonly used in western world, uh, especially UK, USA, Australia, you will find English count is quite commonly used. Uh, it is the length of the yarn in hanks divided by mass of the yarn in pound. So, if you take 1 pound weight of the yarn, you just measure it uh, lengths in hanks and 1 hank is 840 yards. So, there are a lot of conversion you need to learn. So, 1 yard is 0 0.9111 meter and 1 pound is 453.59 uh, grams. So, these are some of the common um, convergent things which we use here. Uh, it depends on you which uh, whichever you feel comfortable, uh, you can follow any of these uh, system. Uh, in metric count, it is described as uh, length of yarn in kilometer divided by mass of yarn in kg. So, you take 1 kg of yarn and you measure the length in kilometer. In worsted count, you take the 1 pound of yarn and measure its length in 560 yards. So, if you see here um, in all of these parameters, the weight is coming in denominator and the length is coming in numerator. So, it is an indirect system where you measure the length per unit weight. So, you keep the weight constant and you just measure the length. Uh, in direct system, uh, this is more direct. So, you will just uh, take the common length of the yarn and you measure the mass. So, tex is described as mass of yarn in gram and length of yarn in kilometer. So, you take 1 kilometer of the yarn and you measure its weight, that is the tex value. Uh, in case of denier, you take the mass of yarn in gram, length of yarn in 9 kilometers. So, uh, these are the direct system. You can any time you can switch from direct to indirect system because if you know the mass, you know the length, it just ratio of these two terms. So, if you know any of these two values, you can go from direct to indirect system or you can follow uh, some, some of these formulas to directly convert from direct to indirect. So, for example, here metric count is connected with English count. So, EC is the English count into 1.69. So, if your yarn count is given in metric form, then you can simply multiply 1.69. Uh, worsted count, English worsted count is connected with English cotton count um, is uh, into 1.5. So, English count and worsted count is connected by this relation. 
if you want to relate uh, direct and indirect, so denier is related with thing list count by 5315 uh, divided by NEC. Tex is related with thing list count uh, 590.5 by NEC and denier is related with tex by these formulas. So, um, so you can see how the how these uh, useful relations it has so important that you can anytime switch from direct to indirect system. So, depending on whichever country you are going or you are dealing on the count system. So, you can um, remember these formulas and convert these counts from one uh, system to another system. Uh, we have also count of plied yarn which is uh, quite useful especially if you see sieving yarn and even in knitting yarn also. Sometimes we use two ply, three ply or four ply system. Plied yarn is actually double or folded yarn. So, when you take two yarns and if you twist together then you can generate two ply, three ply and four ply depending on how many yarns you are twisting. Plied yarn is actually denoted by this way. The first alphabet is representing how many number of yarns you are twisting and the second alphabet which is representing the count of single yarn. So, for example, 2 uh, slash 70s, it is actually showing uh, plied yarn consisting of 2 single ply. So, 2 indicates 2 ply are twisted and each yarn has 70s count. So, S is actually indication for English count, um, 70s S it means 70 any. So, this is uh, S is useful for denoting the English count. So, uh, if you see 360, so here you can um, see plied yarn consists of 3 single ply. So, 3 it means uh, 3 ply, 3 yarns are twisted and each yarn has 60 count. So, each yarn has 60 any. So, this is how you um, represent the plied yarn. So, um, I have a um, couple of examples to do practice um, from conversion of from one to another. Let us uh, do one or two simple examples so that you can get used to of this conversion. For example, let us see simple um, question. Uh, for example, the mass of 500 meter of cotton yarn is 25 gram, find its English count. So, um, you have to find the English count and weight, uh, weight and length is given. So, if you remember the formula for tex, tex is equals to weight divided by length in kilometer. Okay. So, what is the weight? 25 gram. So, this is in gram, 25 gram. And what is the length in kilometer? So, length is 500 meter length is equals to 500 meter. So, in kilometer we can express this 0 0.5 kilometer. So, uh, if you know 1 kilometer is equals to 1000 meter. So, you can simply convert this. So, in text you can in length you can put here 0 0.5. So, the text value will be 50. So, text is equals to 50 length is equals to 0 0.5 meter. So, you simply take the ratios of uh, these two quantity and you will get the text. Now, um, let us see English count. So, how we will find the English count? So, we have seen the uh, formulas for convert correlating English count and text. So, NEC is equals to 590.5 divided by so, this is the formula you can go and cross check uh, um, the slides. So, 590.5 by tex and what is the value of tex? 50. So, 590.5 divided by 50. So, we will simply get 11.81. So, uh, and English count is generally represented by S. So, 11.81 count. So, so, considering this value of mass and length, mass and length, we can found the English count. So, this is the count of. So, we, uh, we generally um, in normal terms, we express this uh, linear density of yarn in either count or text form. So, you can uh, follow up any one, whichever you find suitable. Let us go for uh, the other question. Again, it is the simple one. 
if two 60s count are twisted together find the resultant count of yarn. So, basically you have two yarn and you combined these two yarn and twisted together. So, basically you are making two ply yarn. Okay. So, you combine these two yarns and you twist it together. So, you have two ply yarn, you have to find out the resultant count. So, uh, you can use direct formula, there are so many formulas in textile books uh, where uh, you can directly from the English count, you can directly um, use the formula and um, get the count for resultant yarn. So, the formula if you will find, so 1 nr resultant is equals to 1 by n 1 plus 1 by n 2. So, n 1 n 2 is the count of individual yarns. So, this is uh, n r resultant yarn. So, the count of resultant yarn, this is n 1, this is n 2. So, since both the yarns are same, so 1 by 60 plus 1 by 60. So, you can simply get n r is equals to 30. 30 is count. Okay. Now, uh, it is asking the resultant count in text. So, you can see we have to convert this n r into text. So, text is equals to 590.5 divided by n e. So, 590.5 divided by n e which is 30. So, this is equals to 19.68. So, this is how you can use the conversion formula. So, it is very, very useful um, and I expect you um, to learn some of these commonly used terms. Now, uh, let us move to the other part uh, in uh, yarn segments. So, the other thing which is important uh, in yarn is twist. So, if you have seen uh, most of the yarn which is used uh, in knitting are either spun yarn or filament yarn and to make the yarn from the fiber we use twist. So, we usually twist the yarn. So, twist uh, if you see the definition of twist as per standards, it is the number of turns about the axis per unit length of the yarn or other textile strands. So, if you take a bunch of fibers and if you try to start turning those fibers along the yarn axis that is called twist, it is expressed number of turns per unit length. So, the other thing is the helical or spherical configuration induced by turning a strand about its longitudinal axis. This is again a very common terms used in textile uh, industry. So, twist is also very, very important apart from count because if you keep increasing the twist, it might be possible the yarn uh, become very stiff or it may break. So, twist is also important. So, uh, in reality, twist is used to improve the strength and compactness, uh, but uh, too much twist uh, or turning of the fibers uh, should also be avoided. So, uh, for the knitting point of view, twist is extremely important because if you use highly twisted yarn, uh, there might be possibility that it may not bend properly and the loop geometry will be distorted. So, uh, twist uh, as well as count is extremely critical and it should be in certain range so that it can run smoothly on the machine. So, you can see here in uh, usually this is the parallel strand of fibers and the moment you start turning it, um, the fibers start uh, in the uh, arranging in a spiral form and the length of the yarn will also reduce. So, this is how um, the yarn uh, twist influence the yarn properties. Um, it makes the yarn little bit stiffer and it will also result in shrinkage. So, uh, so the length of the yarn will also contract along yarn axis. So, um, in twist there are two terms which is uh, quite commonly used. So, you should also be careful about the kind of twist which is imparted to the yarn whether it is S twisted. So, if you see here, here the nature of a spirality is along the S direction. So, uh, this looks like S. So, if the yarn is twisted in clockwise fashion, this is S twisted and if the yarn is twisted in anti-clockwise fashion, this is the anti-clockwise fashion. So, you can see it reads the spirality uh, become reverse, it looks like 
a jet twist yarn. So, um, sometimes uh, we have seen like the kind of S twist yarn or jet twist yarn you use on the machine it can have significant influence on the fabric properties. So, in, in fabric spirality um, when I will talk about after few lectures in this week uh, you will realize how important it is uh, to play with these two different twist um, direction. So, not only the count, but also the twist amount and twist direction are extremely important from knitting point of view. Uh, twist of plied yarn or cord yarn, so you have seen the plied yarn where two or more uh, yarns are twisted together. Sometimes it might be possible that you can twist two plied yarn. So, so, you can see here this yarn itself is a plied yarn and when you are twisting plied yarn to make cord, um, this is called twist in plied yarn. So, so in, in twist in plied yarn, so the twist which has to be imparted, uh, it must be the direction must be the opposite of initial twist. So, whenever you have let us suppose here you have S twisted plied yarn, then when you are combining these two twisted plied yarn, we need to apply jet twist and when you are combining jet twisted plied yarn, then we have to impart S twist direction. So, uh, this is again uh, some common things which is found in textile yarns. So, uh, for example, here if you have 4 60s, so it indicates 4 ply yarn of 60s count each. So, 4 indicates the number of single ply yarn and 60 indicates the count. When you have 2 bar, so uh, it indicates uh, 2 indicates you are combining 2, two ply yarn, so 2 by 60. So, uh, 2 by 60 is uh, you are combining 2 single yarn to make 2 ply yarn and then you are taking that 2 ply yarn to make a cord uh, by giving different twists. So, a cord made by 2 ply yarn of 260s. So, 260s again uh, you can describe with using uh, like this. So, 2 stick 60s means you have 60s count and you are combining 2 yarn to make 2 ply yarn and then you have taken 2, two ply yarn and you have combined them together. So, uh, twist uh, is uh, uh, extremely important from fabric point of view. Uh, high twist uh, if you use uh, you will feel uh, the fabric is little bit harder, uh, but it will result in good abrasion and peeling resistance, but uh, uh, unfortunately it has poor bending characteristics. So, you will realize when you are dealing with a very high twisted yarn in knitting and in knitting uh, bending of the yarn is the first criteria because the if you see the needle movement it is actually catching the yarn and bending it. So, bending by default is uh, one of the uh, key requirement uh, which should be smooth in the yarn. So, if the yarn is extremely stiff it will not bend it properly. So, you there may be chances of needle breakages or there may be problem in loop formation. So, that is why poor bending is not um, recommended. Uh, yarn uh, having poor bending characteristics is not used in knitting. Uh, yarn should be uh, good enough to bend properly. Now, let us come to the topic. You have seen the, these two commonly um, used parameters which expressed uh, yarn uh, which is count and the other one is twist. Now, let us see uh, whenever we have a working on a particular knitting machine, how do we select yarn? What count we should use, what twist we should use, um, especially the count is extremely important because uh, on a particular machine certain parameter is always fixed like machine gauge and the technologies whether it is flat bed or circular bed, uh, something is fixed on the machine. So, what are the right yarn count that should be selected. So, uh, this is uh, the thing which we are going to see in couple of slides. So, um, some of the very commonly features uh, which is used in knitting uh, from the yarn point of view that yarn should be smooth, uh, especially uh, if the yarn is very, very rough then you can have the problem of abrasion with the yarn needles or the trick, the trick on the bed and there because of that uh, the fly can generate. So, smoother yarn is better uh, because uh, it will keep watch uh, in the fabric formation and less fly will generate and also the friction will be less. So, there is less rubbing um, of uh, the machine parts. 
yarn should be sufficiently strong because uh, simultaneously so many needles are uh, catching the yarn and pulling it strongly towards the bed inside the trick. So, if yarn is not strong, it might break very easily. So, a sufficient strong yarn um, is the prime importance for uh, knitting. Good elastic recovery because you have seen the yarn is always in extension mode um, on the machine. So, uh, the yarn should recover well, otherwise uh, you will get uh, extended fabric or distorted fabric. Um, also, the count because uh, we can have different diameters of the yarn for uh, because the yarn count can vary depending on the yarn spinning parameters. So, what are the right count that is suitable for the machine? It will depend on the machine gauge and the technologies which you are using. So, uh, in this we are actually focusing the relationship which can be used uh, for selecting the yarn count for a particular machine. So, count is again uh, very important. So, uh, if you see the yarn count for a knitting bed. So, in a knitting bed we have seen uh, the tricks are there and the needle moves inside the trick by catching the yarn. So, you can see here the needles is moving this wall um, inside the trick. So, trick is created by the trick walls. So, between two trick walls the needles is moving. So, these are the trick walls. So, you can see this wedge. So, these represent the trick walls and the needle is catching the yarn and moving inside this slot which is the trick. So, uh, if the yarn diameter is extremely thick, then uh, there might be chances that the yarn can um, rub with the trick wall and in that case the knitting will be disturbed. So, uh, depending on the pitch which is the distance between two needles or you can say which is the distance between two trick wall. Um, it is important that whenever needle is catching the yarn, the diameter of yarn should not be more than um, the half of the pitch because if the diameter of the yarn, if this yarn is greater than half of pitch distance, then there might be problem with catching the yarn and pulling it inside the slot. So, yarn diameter should must be less than pitch by 2. So, pitch is nothing but 1 by machine gauge. So, if you have the machine gauge, uh, you can relate uh, machine pitch is equals to 1 by machine gauge. So, the maximum yarn diameter which you can use on a particular machine is no doubt connected with the machine pitch or the machine gauge. So, in reality, if you know the yarn diameter, um, the maximum yarn diameter which you can use is should be less than um, half of the pitch. So, if you are if you are below this that is good enough. If the yarn diameter is very very thin then there will also be a problem because it may break easily because uh, the needle will uh, be resulting in very harsh action on the very thin yarn. So, we cannot have much thicker yarn and also we cannot have much thinner yarn. So, we have to be carefully uh, playing in a certain range so that a particular yarn can run smoothly on that machine. So, uh, if you see the text and diameter, so you, here you have seen the yarn diameter is connected with pitch and yarn diameter is directly related with the yarn count. So, here is the relation. So, if you know the density of yarn and diameter of the yarn, so this is the diameter of the yarn. So, tex is pi d square by 4 into density into 10 raise to the power minus 3. So, naturally if you see d is d related with tex, so if d is related with tex, so tex is related with machine gauge. So, uh, you can guess like count and gauge are somehow related. So, d if you see d is directly proportional to tex and from the conversion formula you know tex is 1 by NEC. So, tex is 590.5. NEC. So, English count and text are connected with this formula. So, the diameter of yarn is related with yarn count. Diameter is actually deciding the selection uh, because this diameter should be less than half of machine pitch. So, uh, again uh, if you see very commonly used for cotton, the diameter the direct relation is 1 by 28 under root NEC. So, diameter is 
directly proportional to 1 by NEC and uh, here the constant is 1 by 28 if you want to relate diameter and count. So this is only v applicable for cotton, uh, for polyester, for nylon, for wool, um, this constant might be different. But the key uh, take from this slide is uh, diameter is no doubt connected with count of the yarn. So here you have seen diameter is connected with the pitch because you cannot have a, a yarn diameter more than half of the pitch because that is not possible, that is not physically possible because at least two times the yarn diameter the needle is catching. So that much diameter or space is there inside this trick. Okay? So uh, since the diameter is related with uh, yarn count 1 by NEC you have seen in previous slide uh, and machine pitch is related with 1 by machine gauge. So uh, if you replace yarn diameter with English count and if you replace pitch by machine gauge, so this is the relation you will get. So NEC is directly proportional to uh, machine gauge. So uh, again after certain rearrangement you will find yarn count is directly proportional to machine gauge by square. So this is some uh, relationship uh, which exist. So to derive what count is suitable for a particular machine gauge, it comes naturally by the experience but the science is uh, you can see here. So uh, based on um, trying different counts on a particular machine, the observer has realized uh, this there is certain constant which you can use to relate count and machine gauge for different technologies. So, so here um, for selecting yarn count for a particular uh, machine gauge, um, it depends on the yarn type, machine gauge and the machine, uh, what machine we are using whether it is a single jersey or double jersey machine, whether it is a circular machine or whether it is a rib machine. So for each of these uh, again lot of hit and trials uh, has to be done and in last 50, 60 years a number of knitters has been doing this exercise and they have come up with some useful relationship of connecting count and gauge for different machines. So uh, here uh, for circular machine, here are some of the useful relationship. So for single bed, when you have only cylinder, no dial, then the yarn count is related with gauge squared by 20. In double bed, when the needles are in rib setting, a rib getting when you have cylinder and dowel, then the yarn count is related with gauge square by 6. Please remember this yarn count is representing in English count. Uh, when you see uh, double bed interlock, interlock you might have seen in double jersey circular machine interlock setting where you have long butt and short butt needles placed alternatively. So on this machine, the based on the experience uh, they have used, uh, they have found the constant is 1 by 9.6. So for each machine type you can definitely observe uh, this constant is changing uh, but one thing is common that count is no doubt related with the gauge square. So if, um, if you use this formula um, and based on the knitting experience, uh, this, is, uh, this is some of the yarn count in text uh, which is uh, found suitable for single bed, double bed and double bed interlock and rib machines for 18 gauge. So if you have 18 gauge you can see single bed uh, you can use 32 to 40. So the range is there, um, it is not hard and fast rule that you need to have exact same count. You can play uh, plus minus 4 uh, depending on the machine technologies and it is again uh, this is uh, a very empirical relationship, it has, uh, it has, this has derived from the experience. So for single bed, uh, you can play with 32 to 40. Double bed, um, the yarn text which you can use is 8 to 18 for the same 18 gauge. So uh, for the double bed, please remember 18 gauge is the gauge for both. On the cylinder, needles are placed 18 needles per inch as well on dials, it is 18 needles per inch rib the yarn text is lower and in interlock machine you can see 15 to 24. So again 
um, based on the machine type and the gauge, uh, you can see yarn count is different for different beds. Uh, if you uh, connect text with the diameter, you can easily found higher text means higher diameter. So, naturally on a single bed machine, you can uh, play with higher diameter of the yarn and on double bed interlock machine, again uh, the diameter should be less than the single bed, but more than the rib machines. So, the, it is the rib where you must have to be very careful because uh, the possibilities of yarn count is less, especially in forms of text and you have to play with thinner yarn. So, uh, this is some of the careful observations uh, Knitter has observed after so many years of experience in knitting. Uh, again, uh, if you try to see why this constant are different, so if you see single bed, um, there are a lot of space available um, on the front side of the needle. So, that is why uh, you can play with thicker yarn diameter, but if you see the rib, uh, because of the placement of dial bed and the cylinder bed, so there is limited space available in double bed machines. So, in that is why uh, if you see rib machine and interlock machines, um, the yarn diameter will be always lesser than um, the yarn diameter that can be used on single bed machines. Because whenever we are making double jersey fabric, uh, because of the presence of double bed, um, the available space for the knitting is will less. So, if you play with much thicker yarn here, there could be lot of rubbing uh, of the yarn. So, uh, there might be disturbance during knitting. So, single bed, uh, you can have higher diameter, but double bed, you can have lower diameters. Uh, but if you compare interlock and rib, this is the interlock and this is the rib. So, interlock you have seen that um, at a particular movement, only alternating needles of one bed is used. So, naturally you have more space available because you are not using uh, all the needles in the same feed. You are not using all the needles in the same feed. So, in the first course you are using alternating needles on both on cylinder and dial. So, in first feed for example, if you are using long butt needles and then in the next feed you are only using short butt needles. So, sufficient space are there. So, that is why you can have a higher diameter for interlock machine. If you go for flat machines uh, in single bed flat uh, knitting machine, uh, the, the relation is different gauge square by 15. If you go for double bed flat knitting machine, relation is again different gauge square by 12.5. Uh, so, again um, if you are moving from circular to flat, um, things are changing and uh, you need to be careful and again um, you do not uh, derive these relationship, uh, basically it comes with the experience of the knitter. So, uh, this is again if you see here the single jersey diameter is more than the rib machine, again this is because of the space available between two beds. So, this is overall summary of uh, that yarn count is related with machine gauge square but depends on the technologies that you are using for single jersey uh, gauge square by 20 in circular bed for single jersey flat bed gauge square by 15. Uh, if you see rib interlock and the constants are keep getting different and uh, this comes with the experience. Uh, Let us do a simple example um, like how with the help of these relationship we can select yarn um, that can be apt for particular machine. So, let us I have a very simple examples. Let us see that uh, example. A single ply yarn of 10 text, so yarn count is given, is available for knitting on a 24 gauge single circular bed machine. Is the yarn suitable for knitting? So, the question is can we run this yarn on the machine? So, based on the experience, we have seen uh, the relation of count and gauge. So, for circular single bed, circular single bed, the relation is N e is equals to gauge square divided by 20. 
So, the gauge is given. So, as per uh, let us find out what are the best suitable yarn. So, so this is equals to 24 into 24 divided by 20, 24 gauge. Uh, please remember uh, gauge is expressed as needles per inch. So, 24 needles per inch. So, if you solve this, the count will be 28.8 Ne. So, this is in um, English count. So, we can convert this into text. So, 590.5 divided by Ne. So, 590.5 divided by 28.8 .8, which is equals to 20.5. So, best suitable suitable yarn has the text of this okay? and what is the available yarn? So, available yarn is has 10 texts. Okay. So, you can see here this is 20, this is 10. So, naturally um, this is much thinner yarn. So, uh, available yarn in this form we cannot run this machine because this is much thinner yarn and the needle is coarser. So, the moment uh, if you start running this yarn um, it is way below uh, the expected text. So, it is always better. Um, to, to go for some processing on this yarn and, and increase its yarn count. So, um, the yarn is not suitable. So, this is not suitable because it has much lower text compared with the ideal one. So, this is ideal and not suitable. So, if not then what could be done to make it suitable for knitting? So, what process we can um, do is uh, we can definitely if it is 10 text. So, we can combine these yarn to make it 20 text. So, if you take 10 text yarn with the help of spinning, uh, we can make the plying of these two yarns and make it 20 text. So, we can combine. So, whatever yarn is present to us, we can take two bobbins of uh, this yarn and we can make a double ply yarn. So, a double ply yarn will be having 20 texts. Now, this yarn is suitable on the machine, suitable because it has 20 texts and you can see here it is also 20 texts. So, a single ply 10 texts is not suitable for on a 24 gauge machine, but if you make two ply of 10 texts, then it can be suitable. So, uh, so if you learn this formula, um, when you have the yarn uh, with you, you can play around, you can at least guess before going on the machine itself, um, what is the right combination of the yarn count that can run on this machine. So, this is very important from the practical point of view and uh, I expect you to follow this. So, with this uh, I am stopping uh, this particular lecture. So, again just a small summary. So, we have seen that how this small relationship is useful in selecting the right count for a particular machine. So, in next class uh, we will look some other relationship related to production. Uh, which is also very useful to uh, in finding out how much fabric we can produce on the machine. This is also important from manufacturing point of view. So, with this thank you very much and uh, catch you in next class. Thank you.